Hello, dear friends. May God bless all of you. May this day, this Saturday, be a glorious day. From this moment, may the Holy Spirit possess your mind in order to conduct your heart so that then you may reap the good fruits of hearing his voice and lead your thoughts, your mind. May this happen with you. Only he can do that. We can preach the word, teach, try to advise and pray and lay hands, anoint. We can bend over backwards to help you. But if you do not hear the word of God and place into practice, then all of our work will be in vain. And this obviously is a partnership between you and the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, Jesus said, when he comes, he will guide you into all truth. So he guides into all truth. However, those who are guided by him into all truth, must have the courage, the audacity, the determination to obey his voice. And he speaks in an audible way. Every time that I read the word of God, God speaks to me. It's simple. Every time that you hear the word of God, God is speaking to you. Because his word does not return void. No way. So, you can see the following. Your life depends on you hearing and obeying the word of God. Those who hear and obey the word of God have the guarantee from the word of God himself that their life will be blessed. If you follow the truth, the truth will protect you. The truth will defend you. The truth will honor you. If you honor the truth, which is the word of God, then the truth will honor you as well. This is how things work. So God gave the commandment to Adam and Eve. Listen, don't do this. And they disobeyed. They contradicted God. And when we contradict God, we are then doing the will of the devil. That's it. When you, you and I, any of us, when we disobey the word of God... By default, we obey the word of the devil, his suggestion. That's it. There's no other way. So it's up to each of us to have the courage to follow, to obey the word of God. For example, yesterday we spoke about that word that Jesus said. He said, I desire mercy and not sacrifice. So many people think that Jesus abolished sacrifice. Yes, the sacrifice of animals that the Jews and Pharisees would present to have their sins forgiven, these ones have no value anymore. The sacrifice has already been made by our Lord. He gave his own life. He was the lamb itself to rescue us, to save us, to buy our souls. 
However, the sacrifice of obedience to the word of God, this one must be done every day. It's our daily bread. Every day I must sacrifice my flesh, my ego, in order to follow God's path every day, at all times, at every moment. Listen to what the Holy Scripture says, what the Holy Spirit says through John. He said like this, Do not love the world. Do not love the world or the things in the world. He says, Little children, do not love the world or the things of the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. And what's the love of the Father that is not in him when a person loves the world? It's the Holy Spirit. This is very nice. The Holy Spirit is the love, the love of the Father in us. When a person receives the baptism with the Holy Spirit, they have the love of the Father. The Father is present within them 24 hours a day and for their whole life, for their whole life until they meet with the Lord Jesus, until their promotion into his kingdom. So if anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. They have the love of the devil. Did you know that? If you do not have the love of the Father, you have the love of evil. You don't have God's love, you have the devil's love. It's either one or the other. But does the devil have love? Ah, dear friends, the love that the world gives to its children is this. It's deceitful, lies, illusion, is envious, lustful, it's arrogant, selfish. It's all this and a lot more, which is the love of the devil. The devil just wants to play he just wants to catch our soul. However, if you obey the word of God, the word of God will guide you according to God's will. It's written here. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father, that is the Holy Spirit, is not in him. And that's why you see inside of the churches, and especially the evangelical churches, many people with their life stagnant, they are bitter, sad, but they are in the church. They are there, steadfast, faithful to the institution, but they have nothing to do with God. These people create even problems to others who are living in communion with God. But those who serve God always overcome, those who love the Father, those who have the Lord Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, and they obey His voice. Therefore, dear friends, do not love the world or the things in the world. Let's talk about this in a moment. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father, what's the love of the Father? The Holy Spirit. He's not in him. If someone loves the world, because you cannot love the world and have the Holy Spirit. Because God himself said that the world lies under the sway of the evil one. Those who love the world love the evil one. Of course, it's obvious. Those who do not love the world do not love 
what is evil. They love God. Those who love the world do not have the love of the Father, which is the Holy Spirit. For all that, pay attention, for all that is in the world, all, when it says all, when the Bible says all, it's all, no exception. For all that is in the world, what is there in the world? What is there in the world? The lust of the flesh. You know that lust is the desire, right? Lust is the desire. In the case here, the lust of the flesh is sex. The way the person wants, meaning sex without any order, discipline, I mean, sex with everything, you know, sex. So this is the lust of the flesh, which is the sexual lust, the lust of the eyes. This is the lust for everything the eyes can see. Sometimes a person goes to a shopping center and there's an item there that they don't even need, but they got pregnant through their eyes, then they went there and bought that item. Once they got home, that they opened the package, they saw that that item was unnecessary. They even got into debt to buy that rubbish, and now they are crying, complaining, and so on. Anyway, the lust of the eyes, which is the lust the eyes want. You know, it's written that the eyes never get tired. They never get tired of seeing. And all that the eyes of lustful people do, all they do is to attract to themselves what they see, to lust what they see. Sometimes they can't even afford, but they want it. So the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. What is the pride of life? Vanity. Yeah, vanity. You know that vanity, the word vanity, comes from the Latin which means the quality, listen to this, the quality of being worthless or futile. It's an illusion. It's useless. That's what vanity is. Vanity is when you dress all up because you want to have a boyfriend, to conquer a girlfriend, a woman, a man, and so on etc. That's vanity. Meaning, the person puts all the apparel on their body. However, as time goes by, all the apparel will be useless because the person will grow old, will shrink, shrink, until they look like an old dried prune. Have you seen one? Have a look. Get prune, leave it there and let it dry and you see what will happen after a few days. That's how people are. They can put on makeup, they can improve their appearance, they can do a surgery in the nose, in their ears, here and there, but one day everything will shrink, fall. There won't be anything attractive in their appearance anymore. Yes or no? But it's all right. So this is what is in the world. The things of the world are the lust of the flesh, which is the sexual lust, the lust of the eyes, which is the lust of what the eyes see, and the pride of life, which is vanity. Vanity, the vanity of life. is not of the Father. All this is not of the Father, but is of the world. All this is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away, 
and the lust of it as well. Everything passes, everything ends, but he who does the will of God, which means those who follow the discipline, the order established by God himself, these ones will abide forever. Those who walk according to the word of God, those who fear the Lord, will remain forever. So God gives an option to each of us. Actually, two options. He has given us life. Everything that exists in heaven and earth, nature, he gave us life. He gave us life. The life that you have, I have, is a gift from God. It's a gift from Him. But He also gave us the power to choose in order for us to decide what we want. In order for us to decide what we want. To serve Him, to serve God, or to serve the world, to serve our lusts. And you have to decide for yourself. No one can decide for you. This is something very personal. So many people say, oh, my life is rubbish, my life is this, my life is bad, and the other, I feel like dying. You have no idea what death is. You have no idea what death is, meaning to go to eternity. The body stays here on earth. It deteriorates, but the soul, dear friend, doesn't ever die. The soul does not die. If the soul is unwell here in this world, if the soul is always contradicting God's will and doing the will of the world, what do you think will happen to this soul in eternity? And there, it has no right to choose anymore. No more right to choose. You can only choose to follow God of the world whilst you are alive. Once you go to eternity, it's over. There is no prayer service, there is no candle, yellow ribbon, there is no offering that can be given in order to change the final destination of your soul. Isn't it what Jesus said? What does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and lose his own soul? What does it profit him? So, here is this message for you to meditate upon. Read this word there in 1 John, 1st epistle of John, chapter 2, from verse 15 to 19 at least. Meditate on these words. The first book of John, the first epistle of John, is there towards, almost at the end of the Bible, almost before the book of Revelation. It's easy. Get a Bible and read. If you are Catholic, read the Catholic Bible. Go there and read this text here. If you are evangelical, read it. So, what is written, is written, has been determined, and no one can change it. Not even God can change it. It's written and that's it. Because he's the one who said it. And the word that goes forth from his mouth does not return to him void. So dear friends, if you want peace, oh bishop, it's what I long the most for in life. Peace. So peace depends on you. Follow the word of God, which is the word of the spirit of peace. Obey. I know that you have to sacrifice yourself, you have to sacrifice your lusts, your desires. You have to sacrifice because in order to follow God, you have to follow an order. There has to be discipline, order. And if you want to follow your way, you won't be able to. You won't receive peace either. But if you follow peace, which is God himself through his word. Through his word, you can then have peace. If you do not follow him, 
then nothing can be done. Did you understand? You understood, right? Amen. Praise God. If you did not understand, then read it. Understand this with your own mind. Read, meditate, and the Holy Spirit will clarify this to you better than I've done. First John chapter 2, chapter 2, from verse 15 to 19. And we will end it here. May God bless you all and I see you tomorrow in the name of Jesus. Amen.